gang, welcome back. I'm going to talk to you today about stress transformations on stress elements. And I'm going to show you two different kinds of problems. I'm going to show you three examples, but with two different kinds of problems. Number one are these problems with this plane illustrated on it, like an, a, an AB plane. This one's tilted 60 degrees this way. This one's 60 degrees this way. I'm going to show you a method to solve these problems that works every single time. And then I'm going to show you a different kind of problem, which is this guy right here, which you'd say, hey, it looks like the same problem. Well, it kind of is, but it's asking a different thing. So let's start off with stress transformation on these stress elements. Let's talk about the two different kinds of problems that you're going to see. Number one, this is a transformation of a plane problem, right? So they want to know what is the stress on plane A, B, this new plane, right? The stress element started out here, and we want to rotate to this plane here and find the stress on this element. Uh, now, on these problems, you're only going to find two things. Every time, only two things, okay? You're going to find sigma x prime, and you're going to find tau x, y prime. Why the prime? Well, this is the original um, state of stress, and this prime is the transformed state of stress. Now, why, what happened to sigma x, y? Why is he not there? Because I've got an x and I've got a y. Well, what they want on these transformed plane problems is just the, strength, the, the stress rather on that surface there only. So it's only going to have two things on it, like two components, okay? It's going to have a sigma x prime component, and it's going to have a tau xy prime component. And that's it, okay? So you see these problems with this plane across them, like these guys here, they're only going to have these two components. That's it, okay? When you have that one over there, you're going to have an x and a y and a tau xy prime and I'm going to show you how to do that too, okay? Now, all of these problems today, we're going to solve with my favorite method, which is more circle. You can solve these with equations. I think they're terribly confusing. I think students don't understand where the equations come from or what they mean. So I'm going to show you a graphical method to solve these. It's called more circle, and it works every time on these problems. And it's, once you kind of understand my methodology, uh, it's pretty simple to follow and if you can make a triangle, then this is for you, okay? That's, as, that's about as complicated as it's going to get. So I'm going to solve more uh, I mean, uh, stress transformation on these three problems using Moore's circle. Mr. Otto Moore is going to help us today to get a little bit smarter. So let's see if we can do this, okay? We're going to start with this guy over here. Now, here's how you do these problems. Any of these problems that have this find the stress on a plane, like I said, you're going to find x bar, x, x bar, x prime, sigma x prime, and tau xy prime. So you always are going to use the x face, okay? Now, what I like to do on every one of these problems, and I'm going to do it on this one, I'm going to do it on that one, and I'm going to do it on this one, okay? Here you go. Whenever you have... All of these uses a different coordinate system. Moore's circle uses a different coordinate system. It uses the sigma axis, and this is the positive sigma axis over here. This is the negative sigma axis over there, and it uses the tau axis, okay? And tau being the shear um, stress, okay? Now, the one thing that's a little bit confusing, well, there's a couple things that are confusing, but here you go. Number one is that positive is down and negative is up, okay? That's the way the Moore circle uh, works. Negative up, positive down, okay? And the other thing is, uh, when I'm transforming angles, I'm gonna call these problems out here, these problems out here are in the real world, okay? These are real world degrees. That's 60 degrees, that's 60 degrees. We're gonna rotate this one 30 degrees. Those are real world degrees. When I, take, when I go real world and I go into more circle, I got to multiply by two, okay? So when I go into more, what I call more circle world, okay? When I go into this world, I got to multiply all angles by two, okay? 
And whenever I find something in here, and I want to come back out to the real world as far as angles are concerned, I got to divide by two, okay? So as long as you understand that every time I take something from this and I put it in a more circle, I have to multiply my angles by two, okay? That's the trick. So the trick is positive is down for tau, angles are multiplied by two. Other than that, we're going to draw some circles and some triangles, and that's it, okay? So let's start with this guy. What I always on these problems like to start with is, I'm going to do it in red, generating coordinates, okay? I'm going to generate two coordinates on every problem. I'm going to generate an X, and I'm going to generate a Y, okay? Every problem, every time. Here we go, X and Y. I'm going to do it on this one, X and Y. I'm going to do it on this one, X and Y. Why did you put a line there? I don't know. Okay, equals. Here we go. Now I'm going to show you how to get these coordinates. This is easy too, okay? The X is going to come from the X face, right? The Y is going to come from the Y face. X face, Y face, X face, Y face, okay? And there's two components. And for every one of these components are a sigma component and a tau component, okay? Now the tau components are always the same, right? For this one, it's 2 KSI, meaning this downward arrow is 2 KSI, that arrow to the left, 2 KSI. This one's 4 KSI for this side and that side, or this side and that side. This one's 7 megapascals, there and there, okay? So let's do this. 5 on this one is in compression. Compression is what, positive or negative? Negative. So minus 5, and then this one is in tension, 8. And then the question is, how do I pick my towels, okay? And here's how I do this, okay? <laughs> Over here, I'm going to give you a saying. In the kitchen, the clock is above and the counter is below, okay? What does that mean? Look at the X face. Does the towel on the X face make me rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, let me see. That's clockwise. So that means clock above. That means it's going to be, the point is going to be up here, isn't it? And up here is what? That's negative world for tau, isn't it? So I'm going to put negative, what am I going to put? Negative two, okay? And, if, and always, if you figure one of them out, the other one's easy because it's always the opposite, okay? Let's do it again. What do we got for x? x face minus three. y face plus two. Okay, again, the X face rotates on this one um, clockwise. So clock above, he's going to be in negative tau land, right? So the X face is going to be negative 4, which means that this guy has to be positive 4. Let's do it again, okay? For the X face, I've got what? 8 megapascals in tension, positive 5 megapascals in tension, positive and then what's my Y going to be? On this face, on the X face, counter, that's below, which is in positive tau land, right? So that's going to be positive 7, and this one's going to be negative 7, okay? I've generated some coordinate points, okay? That's all I've done so far. Are you with me so far? That's easy, isn't it? Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of crudely plot these points. Sorry about the crudeness of this, but here we go. Okay, I'm just going to draw an axis. Whoop. And this is my sigma axis. And what am I going to have on here? Here's my two coordinates. So, I'm going to put me a thing in here. Minus 5, minus 2. So, minus 5 is, the, like, let's say it's there. And minus 2 is there. Wait, why'd you go up? Because tau is negative up there, right? Sure. So this is 2, and this is 5, okay? And then I'm going to plot the other point, which is 8 and positive 2. So 8, woo, oh, he's way over there. And positive 2 is right, right there, okay? So this is 2, this is 8, okay? Now connect the dots. That's kind of crooked, but it's not too bad. Come on, okay? So 5 plus 8 is what? 13. So half of 13 is 
So that means that there is a center point right there that is 6.5 from that end and 6.5 from that end. Okay, so this is 6.5. Okay, this is 6.5. Whoop. Okay, which means the center of this circle is really at where? If this was negative 5, that means that's at 1.5, doesn't it? From here to there. Okay. All right, and then I need a couple things from this little circle right quick. You know, what I need, well, a couple things. Let's get the easy stuff. Let's get this angle right here. So that angle's fairly easy to find, isn't it? Let's see what it is. I'm just going to do inverse tan of uh, 2 over 6.5, right? 2 divided by 6.5 equals, uh, and then inverse tan of that, right? What? Come on, calculator. 17.1, okay, 17.1 degrees, all right, now here we go, uh, let's find the hypotenuse of this triangle, which would be 2 squared plus 6.5 squared equals, oh my goodness, 2 squared plus 6.5 squared equals Square root, answer equals 6.80. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse of that triangle. Okay, now let's go back up here. We got kind of everything figured out here, okay? Now, here's one thing I do always like to do, and I want you to do this. The five negative was from the X face, right? So let's label that guy. This guy over here is the X face. Okay, this guy over here, this point over here, was from the Y face, okay? And here's how you do these problems with this plane on it, okay? You do this. We're only interested in X prime, so we're always, always going to take the X face and rotate it to that line. So how far do I have to rotate from there to there? What do you think? And then, and then also, I want you to tell me the direction, right? So here we go. Boom, boom, bam, bam. You know what I think that is? If that's 60, then I think that that's 30, right? So I need to rotate anti-clockwise or counterclockwise 30 degrees. But when I go into more circle world, which is what I'm drawing down here, right? What is it? Well, if it's 30 degrees here, it's 60 degrees here. So I'm going to rotate counterclockwise 60 degrees, okay? So that means I'm going to do this. 60 degrees, 60 degrees, right? This would be my circle. If you go all the way around there, that would be my Moore's circle, okay? That's why it's called a circle. I just drew a little bit of the circle, okay? So if this is 17.1 degrees, then what is this, right? This is my new point here. There's a new point. Ooh, that's too far. There's a new point, right? So when I rotate this 60 degrees, my X face is now there. My Y face is now there. We're almost there. We're almost at the answer. All you got to do now is tell me the coordinates of that dot right there. That's it. Okay? Because what? This distance right here, let's make a triangle, okay? This distance right here, that's tau XY. That's what goes right there. This distance down here, minus this little guy right there, right, is sigma x prime. Okay? Let's see if we can get it. First thing I know I need to know is I need to know what is. I'm just going to complete this over here, right? What is that angle right there? Well, I rotated it 60 degrees. So how about this? How about this? Clear. 60 minus 17.1 is 42.9. So this is 42.9 degrees. Okay? So what is this height over here? What is tau xy? Right? The hypotenuse didn't change. The hypotenuse is still 6.80. So how about this? 6.8 times the sine of 42.9 is equal to 
4.63. Where is 4.63? That's this height over here, right? That's this side of the triangle. This is 4.63, okay? So from here, down to that dot is 4.63. Now that dot, where does he live? He lives over here in positive tau world, right? So tau xy is going to be positive, 4.63, what? What does it say? KSI, okay? What's sigma x prime going to be? Well, this is so easy. Sigma x prime is this side right here minus that little guy right there, right? So sigma x prime is really from the origin, right? Because all, all dimensions are from the origin. It's just this little side right there, right? But I'm fixing to find this whole side of the triangle. I just need to subtract 1.5 from it, okay? So here we go. 6.8 times the cosine of 42.9. 42.9.9 9 equals, bam, 4.98, right? But that's that whole length there. So minus 1.5 is 3.48. Now 3.48 is right there. Is that positive sigma or is that negative sigma? That's negative. So minus 3.48 KSI and boom. That is the stress on that plane AB. Okay, you got it? Let's do it again, see if you got it. We'll do it on this one, okay? Now this one rotates a different direction, but I've got my coordinates here, okay? So here we go, let's draw it. Let's draw it. What do we got? The X is negative three, negative four. So here we go, negative three, uh, negative four, uh. Okay, so up here, there's one of my points, and that's the X face. X face, okay? And the next point is two comma four, so I come over here two, uh, and positive four is down here, okay? There he is. Connect the dots, boop, okay? This is uh, four, this is four. Let's see, wonder where that middle piece is right there. Wonder where the middle of that is. Minus three plus two, right? Minus three plus two is how much? Five, okay? So five onto minus three leaves me with what? Oh, wait a minute, stop, back up. If this whole entire distance here is five, okay? Then the middle of that is two and a half from this end or two and a half from that end, right? 2.5, 2.5 which puts the center at dun, dun, da, da, negative 0.5, right? Okay, the hypotenuse of each one of those guys is what? Let's see, four squared squared plus 2.5 squared equals second, square root second answer equals 4.72. So 4.72, 4.72. And while we're here, let's find this little angle here, right? So that's inverse tan of 4 divided by 2.5 equals 1.6 inverse tan. Second answer equals 58 degrees. Okay, 58 degrees. All right, now we got everything kind of mapped out here, okay? This is the X face. This is the Y face. Okay, how are we gonna transform? I gotta rotate the X face, you always rotate the X face to the line, okay? So here we go, X face to the line, whoop. I gotta rotate what? What, is this, what does this look like? That looks like clockwise, I gotta rotate clockwise how much? Right, if that's 60, then this is 30, and if that's 30, then this is 60, isn't it? So I gotta rotate that guy clockwise 60 degrees, but we're going into more circle world, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna rotate clockwise 120 degrees. All right, here we go. Whoop. So 120 degrees. Whoop. 120 degrees. Okay, so where are we? 
we were at 58, right? And if I rotate from 58, if I rotate clockwise 120, I'm now at 178. 178, you know where that's going to put me? Right there with what? Two degrees, right? And then this guy on this side is going to be over here. Two degrees, right? So here's the X face. What are we after? We're after X prime and we're after tau X Y, okay? Prime. So X prime, we're going to follow the X face. I'm interested in that point. What am I interested in? I'm interested in the X distance, which is going to give me what for sigma? We're over here in the positive sigma land, aren't we? So sigma is going to be positive. And then what is tau going to be? Tau's up here in negative land, isn't it? So it's going to be a negative tau, isn't it? All right, how about tau? Can we figure that real fast? Remember the hypotenuse was 4.72. So 4.72 times the sine of 2 degrees da, 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 is going to be 0.165, okay? So this little distance right here, 0.165. So tau, negative, 0. 0.165, what? KSI, okay? There's one, and the next I need this. So I'm going to find the bottom of the triangle, and then what? I'm going to find the bottom of the triangle, and then I'm going to subtract off of it 0. 0.5. I'm going to subtract that little distance right there. And that's going to give me the location over there, isn't it? Because I'm interested in that location of that dot right there. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 4.72 times the cosine this time of 2 degrees is equal to, bam, 4.717. So this side of the triangle right there is 4.717, but i got to subtract off that minus 0.5. So, sigma x prime is 4.217 KSI, okay? Yeah? Let's, do, let's go, y'all. All right, let's do one more. I love more circles. You should, too. Okay? More circles, so easy to work with, isn't it? All you got to do is be able to make triangles and, and circles. Okay, let's make it on this one. We've already got it drawn over here. Let's plot those points, okay? <laughs> let's, look, that's positive and that's positive. I'm going to move my axis, okay? I'm going to move this guy right here, okay? I'm going to put him over here, okay? There's tau positive. There's tau negative. And so what do we have? We have two points. The x is at 8, 7. Well, there's, there's 8 over there. And positive 7 is like, oh, I don't know, there, okay? Which means that this is 7. The other one's at 5, which is there, right? This is 5. Uh, and 7 to the negative, which is there. Draw my line, okay? Good. And then what? Where's the center? What's the difference between 5 and 8? That's 3. That means that this is 1.5. It means this is 1.5. It means the center is at 7.5. The hypotenuse, right? This was 7. The hypotenuse is 1.5 squared plus 7 squared equals Second square root, second answer, 7.16. So 7.16, 7.16. And while we're there, let's get the angle, which is uh, opposite over adjacent. 7 divided by 1.5 equals inverse tan of that equals 77.9 degrees. Okay, so 77.9 degrees. 77.9 degrees. Now, I'm not like writing out a bunch of these steps for like finding angles of triangles, okay? We were at the point, gang, 
where you should be able to be able to follow that, right? And, and uh, just keep up with me here, okay? I'm so excited, okay? Let's go. Next thing is I need to rotate. What does it say? It says rotate 30 degrees clockwise. Now I'm going to do it just like we've been doing over here, okay? Because 30 degrees clockwise in more circle world is what? 60 degrees. That's right. Okay, so we're going to rotate clockwise. Womp. 60 degrees. Clockwise. Womp. 60 degrees. Okay. So where's our new point? We were at 77.9. 77.9 plus 60 is 137.9, which is somewhere over here, right? Which, let's see, minus, let's just minus 180 off that, 180. Means this is 42.1 degrees here, okay? 42.1 degrees. And then the same thing over here, okay? 42.1 degrees. This is getting kind of busy, isn't it? Kind of busy, okay? Which one of those was my X face? The eight and the seven. That was this guy, right? This was X face. So where is X face now? Over here, this is X prime face, and then whoop, this is Y prime face, okay? Because what am I doing here? I am drawing a new stress element that is like this, okay? And it's gonna give me this. Here's my X prime, here's my Y prime, and then I'm gonna have tau on this, these guys, all right, right? Okay? So I'm trying to come up with what is the new X prime, what is the new Y prime, and what is my tau? Is tau positive or what? Now on the X face, on the X face, tau, is it going to be positive or negative? That's positive tau world that way, right? So he's going to be positive, which means what? Clock above, counter below. So I need to go counter. He needs to be up there, right? Which tells me everything I need to know. Okay. Can we find the, the point for the tau real fast? I mean, tau is just this right here, isn't it? It's just that side of the triangle. So what's the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is 7.16 times, what do we need? We need the opposite side, so we need the sine of that. So times the sine of 42.1 equals, bam, 4.8, okay? So tau... Tau is 4.8. So tau, well, here we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Tau xy equals 4.8. 4.8 what? Mega Pascals. Okay. What is x prime going to be? What is x going to be? Okay. x is this distance right there. What? Well, no, it's not that distance. It's actually this distance, right? Because it's the location of that dot. Where is that dot? Where is da, 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 that dot over there, right? Well, let's see what the length of these triangles is here. This is going to be pretty easy, I think. It's going to be 7.16, the hypotenuse, right? Times the, this time I need the adjacent side of the triangle, right? Which is a cosine Cosine of 42.1 degrees equals 5.31. Now, what do I do with 5.31? Where was our center? Our center was at 7.5, right? 7.5. So guess where the Y face is? 7.5 plus 5.31, right? This guy, the Y is 7.5 plus 5.31, and then guess where the x is? 7.5 minus 5.31, right? I do the exact same amount backwards from that point, right? And so my y prime number is 7.5 minus 5.31 is 2.19, 2.19, these are both positive, aren't they? Right? Because these are both on that side of the sigma um, axis there, right? And then what is x prime? 
7.5. Oh, I did that backwards, didn't I? Plus 5.31. Let me do that. Let me rearrange that. I did this exactly backwards. This one is 12.81 megapascals. That's those two guys added together. And then this one over here, is those two subtracted, which was what I just erased, 5.31. No. Dang it, what was it? 2.19. 2.19. There we go. 2.19 megapascals, okay? So that is the transformed stress element at 30 degrees clockwise. There's your tau values. There's your sigma values, okay? So... Totally different problem. On this one, we're looking for X and Y prime when it says tra uh, translate or, or um, transform a whole stress element. But if it says just transform a plane, it's only the X side to the plane. The X side to the plane, right? You can still use more circle to get the answer, but that's all there is to it. I hope this clears up a money point. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.